we're talking about Bayesian linear regression, and I hope you enjoyed those videos on the multivariate Gaussian distribution. And before we proceed, I would like to make a little remark here to remind you of something. If you didn't remember, these x's, we can always replace the xi's by some basis functions. We can replace xi by phi of xi for some basis functions phi. So phi here would, so this would be like a vector phi 1 of x1 up to phi m of x1. And by this type of procedure, we can model non-linearities. Non-linearities, having trouble writing non-linearities, in the x's. And this is a really, really key thing to remember. Remember, in linear regression, it's not just about lines. That's the slogan that we've talked about for linear regression. All right, and now we're ready. So with that little sort of note out of the way, just to remember, just remember you can always make it nonlinear by applying a some some set of basis functions. And now we're ready to compute the posterior distribution. So in order to compute the posterior distribution, the first thing we need is the likelihood function. So what is the likelihood function? The likelihood function is just the probability of the data given theta, and in this case we already know theta is just w, so let's just write w there. And this we know from the videos where we computed the MLE for linear regression. You can go back and check that if you want. The likelihood function is proportional to e to the minus 1 over 2 times, or not 1 over 2 actually, I guess it's, what is it? It's a over 2 now. It was 1 over 2 sigma squared before, and now that becomes a over 2 times y minus a matrix aw, oh, not squared, transpose times y minus aw. And a here, this is where. A is this design matrix thing. You remember this. We take our vectors x and we we put them into x1 transpose is the first row down to xn transpose is the last row. We put them in this matrix and we call that A. And that's the design matrix. It's our design matrix. And the nice thing about this little expression, and, and of course here these these y's are just we take the each of the individual y's that were in our data and we put them into a vector. I guess I should put transpose here to make it a column vector. And I should emphasize that this y sometimes I use this little y for the value of a a new y that we're going to predict, but here it's the vector of y's that we observe. So just just a little notational inconvenience that we use the same y. Okay, and now we need to compute the posterior distribution. The posterior. Always an essential thing to get your hands on. And the posterior distribution is the probability of w given the data which is proportional to the likelihood times the prior. That is, the probability of the data given w times the probability of w. And we have an expression here already for the likelihood, so we can just plug that in. So this is proportional to e to the minus, I keep on doing that, one over, a over 2 times y minus a w transpose y minus a w. And what is the prior? So we'll look back here to our model. Well, we put this multivariate Gaussian prior on w. So the distribution here, the, the density function, it has a density since the covariance matrix has determinant non-zero. 
and the density function is proportional to it's proportional to e to the minus b over 2 w transpose w so let's just add that in here so we get minus b over 2 w transpose w because if you were to put the if we move the b you know if this were like b times i in between the w's and then so w the mean is zero so we so we just get this you can check that that's just a simple just a simple simple thing to check there okay and now let's let's figure out what we're going to do with this so our strategy here is that if you if you watch the video on in the univariate case we computed the posterior we computed something very much like this sort of like this not exactly i guess it's i guess it's really different actually never mind but the strategy is that we're going to show that w that this this posterior distribution is gaussian and it's almost once you sort of get used to seeing these things it's just immediately clear from this expression because this expression is a quadratic in w if you were to multiply this out which we're going to do in a second then it's a quadratic in w and therefore because it's e to a uh, to minus you know a, a quadratic thing it's going to turn out to be gaussian but we should check that and and actually we want to get an explicit expression for it so we should definitely definitely figure out what this thing is so let's how should we go about this let's see let's pull out let's pull out the exponent um, let's just look at this exponent here and let's also pull out a minus one half make life a little easier so we're gonna have a times y minus capital A W times Y minus capital A W minus B times W transpose W and let's multiply this part out so this just becomes just put it here A Y transpose Y minus 2 what should I put I'll put W transpose A um, A transpose Y um, let's see, W transpose A transpose Y plus W transpose A transpose A W I'm out of room plus where should I put this? Was it plus oh that's a that should be a plus there, sorry. Plus B W transpose W. Okay. Now if we multiply the A the little A through here and we can combine these last two terms we get a y transpose y minus 2 w or oh, forgot the a 2 a w transpose a transpose y plus now let's pull out this w transpose on the left we get little a times a transpose a and let's pull out the w on the right so this becomes plus b times the identity matrix W right we can move the B in between and and put an identity matrix in there okay it's looking good and now what do we want to do we want to get this to look like a Gaussian right so here's the there's a little trick you can do it's a very convenient little very convenient little trick so in the exponent of a Gaussian we have a quadratic form so this is a little aside here where should I put it Maybe I'll, yeah, I'll just put it right here. So in the exponent of a Gaussian, we have a quadratic form that looks like this. This is just in general. X minus mu transpose times the inverse of the covariance matrix. Let me call that, um, what do I want to call that? Let me call that lambda. Sometimes that's called the precision matrix, the inverse of the covariance matrix. And let's multiply this out. So this becomes x transpose lambda x minus 2 mu transpose lambda x. Or actually, let me make that 
x transpose mu x, x transpose lambda mu plus mu transpose mu, mu transpose lambda mu and that's a constant. So I'll just put const here. Okay. So right, this happened because lambda is is symmetric. The a covariance is matrix is symmetric and the inverse is is also symmetric. So lambda transpose equals lambda and that's why we could pull those together. And now so the here's here's the little here's the little trick. Save ourselves some work. Basically what we need to do here is complete the square. We want to sort of factor this to get w minus some mean and then get the covariance matrix. So what we're going to do is is match up terms here. So we're going to look for the part which is has like a w transpose times something times w and that's this part so let's let lambda equal so we're back to blue now we're gonna get we're gonna get lambda we're, we're gonna let lambda equal this thing little a times a transpose a plus little b times i and now we need to match up a w I should have put w instead of x here but so you can but you can you can keep track of that. We want to look for something which is minus two times w transpose lambda mu. And the only place where we get a w is here in the rest of this. So we want to get what do we want? We want to get a w transpose a I'm copying this thing. A transpose y. We want that equal to this part here, which was W transpose lambda mu. Did, did I already use mu for something? No. Okay. Very good. We can use mu here with no confusion. So we want this, right? And if we could get, it would imply this if we could get little a times a transpose y equals lambda mu. Ah, and now we're good. We're in good shape, so we wanted this. Now we're in good shape because we can multiply by lambda inverse. By assumption, the covariance matrix, our, our assumption, let's see, our assumption, can we assume that? Uh, let's assume it for a second now. So let's assume that we can invert this precision matrix, lambda, the inverse of the covariance matrix. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. We, we, we have to be able, okay, well, let's come back to that. So this would be little a. Lambda inverse a transpose y equals mu. So we will let mu equal this thing. Let me put that put that over here. Make it cleaner. So we'll let mu equal that. So let me circle those. So we we let lambda be that, and we let mu be that. And if we can get this, then we we satisfy those properties. And then we can plug them back in up here. So we plug those in. And actually, I guess we could just, we immediately have it, right? At everything else was a constant with respect to w. So if we put these in here, then we know that it, it factors in this way. And so this shows immediately. So we just get immediately that this distribution, right, this was the posterior was proportional to e to the minus one half times this and so this shows that the posterior let me put a different color the posterior on w given the data is normal to normal over w multivariate normal with mean go down here so you can see this with mean mu and covariance matrix lambda inverse. And that gives us the posterior distribution on W. Alright, let's stop there and we'll 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 be back in a second to check that out.